the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I keep my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I call you friends because I have told you everything that I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you. And appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. I shut my phone down so it doesn't ring. <laughs> yes. There we go. <laughs> so today is the feast of Saint Matthias the Apostle. It's interesting. They, when they chose Matthias, of course, they had requirements. The apostles said there has to be, it has to be somebody who was with us from the baptism of the Lord on, that was part of our group, was a disciple of Jesus, followed him around, uh, and was with them basically for three years. So they, they wanted someone who was really there from the beginning, and, and then a witness to the resurrection, obviously. And, uh, because that was, it was, seemed critical. Because this, what the apostles were doing when they were going about preaching and teaching, they were preaching and teaching, of course, from what they experienced, who they lived with, what they witnessed, and so on and so forth, and the coming of the Holy Spirit, which made it all possible in the end for them to preach. Uh, so you have St. Matthias, uh, and that's why the church says, when it comes to Revelation, you know, when we say Revelation, we don't mean the book of Revelation. If we mean the book of Revelation, we say the book of Revelation. But when we say Revelation, that means uh, all that God has desired to reveal to us. Uh, as far as new, like that Jesus is the Son of God, and so on. There are three persons in the Trinity. But the church says in its documents that all Revelation ceased with the death of the last apostle. Anything new that needed to be uh, taught ended with the death of the last apostle. Since then, we grow in understanding and knowledge of what was revealed to the apostles and, and the scriptures. And so anything we have since then is a is, uh, an affirmation of what already has been revealed, what already has been taught, and so on and so forth. So you have dogmas of the church, like the dogma of the Immaculate Conception, the Assumption of Mary, which is part of the faith of the church. It's nothing new when the church came out and declared that Mary was conceived without sin and that she was assumed into heaven. That was nothing new the church was teaching. It had been taught and preached and believed from 
very beginning of the apostles. It's just the church came out and gave uh, uh, clarification to it because it had been, people had believed it for so long, there's some questions that came up, so the church made a dogmatic statement to make sure that people understood what was revealed from the beginning. <coughs> and then you have, uh, what else are I going to say about St. Matthew? Oh, I know what I was going to say. I'm not getting that old that I forget, forget. <laughs> um, the the uh, Matthew, like I say, was there from the beginning, but he was not chosen by Jesus in the sense that the other apostles were chosen uh, at the very beginning. Obviously, he was chosen by Jesus. It just Matthew didn't know it yet, <laughs> and and so because. Judas was the one of the twelve that, of course, abandoned the faith. And so now you have the eleven. And then they pray and they choose St. Matthias. And so you wonder, okay, how does all that work? Because we, what we look at as human beings, uh, we look at fixing things in the sense that when something doesn't go the way we plan, well, we have to make other plans and change it and fix it. It wasn't what we wanted, but now we've got to do it this way. And so we fix it that way. God fixes things. Like I say, he's the master of 52-card pickup. That game where you say, you want to play it? And people say yes, and so you throw all the cards on the floor and say, pick them up. <laughs> That's 52-card pickup. God's the master of that. But we think in terms of, now we got to fix something because it's broken. Or something happened, we have to make a change. We have to do this and that and the other thing. And it may change many other things we do. For God, in a sense, nothing is ever broken. Nothing is ever broken. Uh, we break things, God doesn't. And in a sense, he fixes them, but God has fixed them from all eternity. In other words, for all eternity, God has known everything about everything forever. And he saw that Judas was going to leave the Twelve from all eternity. He sees us when we think we're making big mistakes and, and it changes the course of our life or whatever. We see it as maybe a failure. God doesn't see that things that way. Because he already he already took that in account for for all eternity. So the the plan, as long as we are praying, asking God to move us in his direction, he wants to move us according to the Spirit. Oh, we shouldn't worry a lot because even when things break, they're fixed. I mean, they, God knew that. We just didn't. We just found out what had happened. But God has known it forever and has fixed it forever. As long as we keep turning back to Him, He fixes us. Just like at the uh, Easter vigil on Holy Saturday, in the proclamation of the the Easter proclamation, and most of the time it's sung. And what does the church proclaim? Oh, happy fault about Adam and Eve. The church says, oh, happy fault. Oh, necessary sin of Adam that brought us our Redeemer. Not that God intended it or willed it or anything, but when Adam and Eve sinned and sin entered the world, God had already known that from all eternity and knew that he was sending his son Jesus Christ. But the reason Jesus, on our, our end of the picture, the reason that Jesus came and suffered and died and rose again was because we screwed up. We made a mistake. That's the way we see it. And we did. But the way God sees it is it's all part of the plan. <laughs> In a sense, I've figured it, I've known this forever. And providentially, I've all forever has been there that my son was coming into the world. So, in a sense, so we're good. And that's why the church says, oh, happy fall, oh, necessary sin of Adam. So we rejoice today in the selection of St. Matthias as one of the twelve, and we celebrate that on this day, his feast day.
Why don't you invent a Velcro? It's pretty neat stuff. Especially this day, uh, at the request of Pope Francis, that we pray in a special way for the end of this virus and that uh, the world is healed of this illness. And we remember all who have gasped in this life, and once again, the intention of this Mass for Mary Eckford, that all of those who have passed from this life may be rejoicing in the kingdom of heaven, the glory of God. We ask this through Christ. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your church, reverently presented for the feast of St. Matthias, and through them strengthen us by the power of your grace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on the apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending them sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, all power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who says to your apostles, peace and evil, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
Now let them have a very spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us, <clears throat> let us pray. Never cease, O Lord, we pray to fill your family with divine gifts, and through blessed Matthias' intercession for us, graciously admit us to a share in the lot of the saints in life. Through Christ our Lord. So you may respond, Amen. Come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.